Hello guys, this is Andy from Big Max Workshop and Painting Studio and today I am painting a rhino. Now this is actually a Lamenters rhino but uh, the techniques can be used for any yellow, especially uh, especially over black. Now uh, uh, what I'm doing here is I'm just taping the um, checkered areas away so I'm not having to repaint them. Now this can be done by hand but if I was to do it by hand I would actually uh, be Started off with something along the lines of Zandri dust um, to make it a lot easier to get the uh, colours up. Obviously, with using an airbrush, you can get the layers on a lot easier. So, uh, if you're doing by hand, start off with something along the lines of Zandri dust by G Dub, uh, and then you'll uh, get a much easier uh, time uh, starting the paint job. So, uh, I'm starting off with filthy brown. I'm going over with thin layers of the uh, over the black. Now, filthy brown is a really good colour for uh, a yellow base. Uh, it gives you quite a rich colour, but it's also um, not over the top with brightness. So you get a really nice um, shade for it. Now, I'm doing this in fit, uh, a couple of thin layers, even with the airbrush, it's just easier to do it that way. Uh, give, you, give yourself a bit of time to uh, breathe and uh, plenty of time for the um, kit to dry. Uh, so, just bringing that. Um, Filthy, filthy brown in uh, a good covering over everything, even over the uh, taped areas. It doesn't matter at, at this point. The uh, tape will uh, protect the uh, areas underneath, and uh, making sure that um, you get a solid covering uh, after two or three layers. So I'm still working on this uh, same colour at the minute. Now, all it is is just uh, bringing that um, base layer up, uh, so you've got a proper flat coat. Uh, working, um, working all the uh, areas, making sure you get into all the crevices, nooks and crannies. Uh, you want a decent coat on this. Uh, by hand, again, uh, you, <laughs> it's very difficult uh, to paint anything um, black uh, over black uh, by hand. So I would uh, make sure that you get the uh, layers uh, really worked in, uh, very thin. So once I've got the uh, the coat I wanted, I'm going to start adding a bit of shade into the um, areas. I'm going to uh, be using uh, Vallejo's Game Color Khaki, and I'm focusing on the um, recessed areas. Now this is uh, just to add a bit of depth to the color. Um, it really allows you some uh, breathing room really makes for an interesting colour transition once you get them colours in. So, just uh, when, you, when you're when doing the, um, the, the shaded areas, uh, just be careful. You don't want to go over the top. Um, you build it up gently. Um, you've got plenty of time. There's no, there's no rush to get anything in there. Uh, so once you've uh, got the uh, first layer of shading down, you then uh, go back up with uh, the base coat and again in this case it was filthy brown I tend to use filthy brown for all my yellow um, bases uh, it's a lovely rich colour and as I like to um, start off with a black um, undercoat uh, for pretty much everything even white these days I, uh, I, I really like this one as it gives you a, a really good coverage over the black So once um, you start working, you br you bring the blending up with the uh, in this case with the airbrush. Um, again, once you've got that base layer, you can do this all by hand. I just find it easier with the airbrush. It's uh, a lot, obviously we're very busy, so we have to uh, use the more efficient tools wherever possible. But you focus on the raised areas. You, you blend out the um, the shaded areas uh, a little bit. It really gives you a nice uh, paint dif uh, color diffusion. Once you've got a couple of nice layers of the uh, filthy brown, I then went over with um, American Army yellow uh, interior uh, um, interior yellow. Sorry, 
Now this is from the uh, Vallejo Panzer Aces range. I started using this as a early highlight. Again, focus on the areas um, where the light would hit first, but still trying to diffuse some of the um, shaded areas. It uh, just really blends it nicely um, when you start building up those layers, especially once you're using if you're using thin enough paints, you can start you can still see the uh, the different colours slightly through each shade. And it really makes for a nice smooth blend, really enhancing the uh, overall finish of a figure. Now, <clears throat> I do apologise, obviously there's a large portion of painting yellows in, over, the, uh, uh, over the same areas. Although we are different shades of yellow, yellow is still yellow in essence. Uh, but it's just the nature of this particular job. I fancied doing something a little bit different um, and I'd not painted anything yellow for a while. Now once I'd uh, got everything uh, to uh, a point where I, I was happy, I started uh, just blacking out the um, metalwork areas. Uh, any black will do. We, I tend to use a Vallejo primer um, as my default black these days. And just uh, you just try and be careful to not um, go over the top and uh, put put the paint where you don't want it. I then took the tape off, which left me with some nice solid black areas. And these are going to get checkers on. Um, which was the first for me. I've never, never, I've never done checkers at this point. Um, and although I freehanded them, uh, there's probably a much more efficient way. Now I'm starting off with Dawnstone by G Dub, and um, it, obviously, as you can see, it's quite thin, uh, just to make uh, give me a bit more uh, breathing room with the um, checks. Now next time I do it, I'm probably going to find um, look into. Uh, making the, the checkered areas neater. Uh, they are a little bit um, scruffy insofar as some of them are different sizes. Um, but as I said, this was a first for me. Uh, I'm gonna look into finding a, a way of making the checks um, much more square. So I'd got, I went around the entirety in Dawnstone, a couple of layers, uh, just to get them checks into something like a pattern. Yeah, apparently Dodge, uh, Dodge says I need to watch the channel more as a tutorial. Uh, well, he can wind his neck in. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, at this point, I'm going over with uh, Pale Grey uh, by Vallejo. Uh, as you know by now, we use a lot of Vallejo paints. We're quite happy to use any any um, any brand of paint. As long as the colours are the right shade, we don't care. Um, although I do say, uh, when it comes to airbrushing work, the GW uh, paints are a lot harder to get through the airbrush, so just be aware of that if you're new to airbrushing. I'm just uh, bringing the um, the uh, shapes uh, squares up to a, a, brighter, a brighter finish. A uh, couple of layers of the uh, pale grey. I'm going to start working up the... Um, up through the um, core, core tones, adding some off-white in, just to make them look like the white checker pattern, what you'd expect to see in a Lamenta's vehicle. I chose a Lamenta's vehicle because it offered a, a bit of variety, and also we, uh, Lamenta's are yellow. Now this was actually um, deliberate insofar as, obviously I, I've not painted yellow in a while, but it gives you an option opportunity to uh, look at painting different yellows over blacks um, such as Imperial Fists or some other random yellow um, faction what you decided to go for such as Bad Moons if you're an old player or I don't know uh, Eandon uh, for Eldar. Now obviously I'm starting to uh, add the uh, white effects to the, um, to the checks and I'm aiming towards the top corners now, uh, where the uh, white will hit. So you start to see a sort of fade in the white, in the whites of a check pattern. Now, uh, once I uh, went round with the white, I started. I went round again with the black to neaten it all out. And I'm using uh, 
Vallejo's Black Grey, which is um, pretty much the darkest grey we've found without just mixing one of our own. And I'm using that just in the corners where the uh, light would hit uh, from the same direction as the uh, as we did on the white. Now this uh, this bit um, was quite entertaining for me because it just seemed really odd painting a love heart on a uh, space marine vehicle. Now if you've seen our um, freehand tutorial, uh, you'd know to um, draw this on by hand. Now I had varnished it at this point just to make sure that I didn't uh, damage the surface. Um, it gives the uh, paint a little bit of protection uh, when you're drawing over by pencil to stop the paint getting um, ruined uh, if you press it on there a little bit too hard. Now you can't see uh, you can't see the uh, pencil lines very well, uh, but they are genuinely there. Um, I'm just uh, using burnt red um, for the base of the uh, reds. Uh, just to make it stand out really nicely and it, it was a very uh, interesting experience painting heart shapes on a space marine rhino uh, it, seemed, it seemed quite odd obviously I put a few blood drops on there as well to um, represent their uh, sanguineous uh, allegiance once I'd uh, got the red base in I, I uh, added a few layers of highlight with Evil Suns Red, uh, which was very, very thin down. No, not Evil Suns, uh, just flat red, um, red by Vallejo Air, uh, which I uh, just, uh, it just to brighten the colour up, make it look a bit more vibrant. Um, the dull uh, red didn't stand out enough. Uh, so I wanted something a little bit more interesting to uh, to work with and really make it stand out and look look, look fun, look interesting. Uh, so I worked worked with um, with some thin layers of the uh, of the red by uh, Vallejo, and then fire orange, which is an old GW paint from back in the nineties, uh, which I still had knocking around, uh, which I just put a few touch highlights in the uh, upper corners, upper reaches, just to uh, bring that shape out nicely. So I've got the. Um, I got the uh, red down and start using oily steel over the uh, metalwork areas, and this was just uh, it's a, it, it easily replaces lead belcher, same sort of shade as um, GW's lead belcher. Uh, it's just I prefer the Vallejo metals. I find them easier to use. Uh, they tend to go on a little bit smoother. And I just went around nice and gently around all the um, metalwork areas just to get that. Uh, that silver effect um, nice and neat across the model itself. Now at this point um, I completely forgot to do the edge highlights. Now I would do the edge highlights before I did this next time round but I weren't really paying attention to what we're doing so I started doing some weathering. And I decided to do it a little bit in a different manner to what I would normally do. I normally do it through the airbrush. I've never tried doing it. Uh, not done any sponge weathering from absolutely ages, so I thought I'd do something different. So I've got a, an old bit of um, sprue sponge or something along them lines. It needs to be a, a very uh, fine grained sponge. And I uh, just dabbed it on in various areas with uh, Rhinox Hide. Uh, once that dried, I went back over um, the areas with oily steel just to bring out the um, damage of the areas it's really uh, as if it's gone down to the um, gone down to the bare metal uh, in some of the um, in some of the uh, weathering uh, sections it just really va uh, makes the vehicle look a lot more interesting than having a f uh, straight out of the factory paint job and as you can see uh, I've gone around all the areas what would look like it uh, get worn, uh, so hatches and um, hinges and things, even going down the centre of the uh, um, checkered areas as well. It makes it look a lot more interesting uh, doing it this way, and um, I quite enjoyed it because it was something I've not done in such a long time. So <laughs> going back to the edge highlights, I uh, used. Um, Vallejo's 
uh, yellow, uh, which is a very, very bright yellow. But obviously with it being such a thin paint, uh, as it was an air paint, which I have thinned down as well, you can get away with it a little bit. It gives you a little bit um, more control. And uh, I went around doing all the edge highlights um, in that uh, bright yellow, just to bring out the final highlights. As I said before, uh, this should have been done before the weathering, as it makes it, makes it a hell of a lot easier. But um, yeah, uh, I'm a Muppet at times, and I do uh, tend to mess up. Now at this point, you can leave the figure as it is, or you can go on to doing the grime effects and such, which is something I love. I think uh, all vehicles should look like they've been in a battle. Uh, but just beware, if you're going to do something like that, make sure you varnish it first and just to make sure that it doesn't um, ruin the paint job. It just protects your work and gives you, it gives the, uh, weather, the grime and effects something to work with. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you learned something. Please feel free to uh, comment and uh, give Dodger a good, good old fashioned trolling. And uh, if, you, if you like what you see and you want to see some more of us, please hit subscribe, please hit like and share with your friends. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one. Ta-ra! So, uh,